Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. You guys got quiet. I didn't have to, like, be the <laughs> kindergarten teacher or anything today. You guys are all just sitting patiently waiting for me to begin. Um, so I hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, whether you had turkey or ham or gobbled or you wobbled, um, you know, hope everyone had a good day. But, you know, as believers in Jesus Christ, Thanksgiving is just a day to be thankful for certain things. But we live every day with thankful hearts. Amen. And Ephesians chapter 5 reminds us, to be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We live a life full of thanksgiving, and when our hearts are thankful, it's amazing how it changes our perspective. I think we've talked about that before, but when we're thankful for what we have and not focused on everything the world tells us that we're missing, suddenly everything is more than enough. And I will say that I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. I'm so thankful that we have a place where we can come together as a family to share our burdens, to share our joys, to celebrate together, and to mourn together in this life. So, anyone have any prayer requests or testimonies this morning? Yeah, Roberto. So, I have a few things to share. Um, the first thing, uh, I was having a hard time. Uh, the last week, maybe the week before, after we met with our children for our new home. And the reason why I was having a hard time is because potentially the, the payment for the house, for the mortgage, is not going to be where we want it to be. <clears throat> we can still afford it, but I was having a hard time solving that pill. And uh, so I got really mad one day and I just walk over there and just lay in there. I was just going to try and uh, think, get my mind off the whole thing. Excuse me. I to And I just fell asleep. And the next morning, uh, where I was getting ready to shower, I just uh, said a, a short prayer and I said, God, you have never let me down, so I'm just going to trust on you and you are going to take care of the whole thing. And it's the way. The worry went away. I haven't worried since. Glory, praise the Lord. So, that's <clears throat> one uh, praise that I want to give the Lord. The second one is uh, I went to see the eye doctor on Friday. And I haven't been there in four years. And uh, so, the guy's doing the exam and all this other stuff. And, whatnot. and I already use glasses, I use them at work. But they're doing all these tests, taking all these pictures in my eye, doing like a, what we put on the on an MRI for your eyes and all this sort of stuff. And at the end, the guy goes, well, you're doing glasses. And I go, well, I don't even use some, so how come? He's <coughs> like, you are like a hair away from you to the first level of prescription, so it's not necessary. You're going to deliver it. You're still seeing things like both uh, up close and far away. So... That's a good thing because uh, one of the things that eye doctors are most concerned with people that have been diagnosed with diabetes is that you can have eye damage and you should go blind. So that's that's one thing that I want to praise the Lord for. And the other one is for all, again, for bringing uh, <coughs> my life because she is the key component of this whole equation. Uh, it's because of all the things that she has changed, mm -hmm. not only for her, but mostly for me, is that I am doing uh, as well as I am right now. And the last thing is a uh, prayer request for our nephew, Kevin. He has issues with allergies, <coughs> mostly with nuts. And the past several weeks, he's had to go to the hospital in an ambulance after having an anaphylactic shock that uh, has come probably about an hour after he's received some sort of uh, stimulus. He's right now what they call peanut therapy, in which he has to eat a certain amount of peanuts every day, so he can build up the tolerance and all that. There's no reason he's, he's been uh, having to go to the hospital because the reaction kicks in. So just pray that total healing, God takes 
Yes, uh, I've actually prayed for my daughters that live out in Oregon, uh, especially for uh, daughter Arsenal uh, and her children. Uh, just uh, we've got some news, a lot of family issues going out. We need um, God to intervene uh, with that situation, and, and uh, we heard about it. You know, Scripture always comes. Is there anything too hard for the Lord to do? And for with God, all things are possible. Mm-hmm. And we really need God in this next week um, to really move in that situation. And we just to really appreciate your prayers and, and uh, continue to pray for the Lord. She was uh, pretty sick there, and, uh, and and we always get concerned since she had the issue personally here. That when she gets sick now. It, it, you know, return to something major, you know, pretty, pretty quick. So we just appreciate, you know, the, the, the prayers. And then my nephew and his wife, uh, they came on last night. They was going through here. Uh, her brother lived in Minneapolis. And I just thank God that they uh, thought of us when they came through the morning. They stopped here last night. And we spent some time with them. A um, great Christian, great Christian couple. Uh, we've been married a year now, and they had and to see the light in your eyes, how much they love each other, but also see how much they love the Lord. It, it is so good to spend time with Christian folks. And they talk about the right day, you know, talk about it. And, the, and the spirit just flows between you. And so we thank the Lord for that time. Amen. Anyone else this way? Okay. All right. Well, let's stand and go to the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you right now.
encourage anyone who has any worries on your mind, anyone who is weary, anyone who feels a spirit of heaviness, to just cast it aside and come to the well and drink deep of the water, the living water, and just let it all go. In Jesus' name. Just a reminder, if you brought your cell phone, turn it off. I'm going to check mine, make sure I turn it off. Friday, December 8th. Oh, come let us adore him. Eastern Gate House Prayer. Just focusing in on the reason for the season. Uh, casting off all the things that are causing distractions. Uh, that would cause distractions from focusing on who he is. A lot of commercialism going on. A lot of paganism going on. A lot of other things are going on. A lot of distractions. A lot of illnesses and everything. We're just going to bind them. Claim the healing uh, and restoration in all the situations that are trying to keep us from truly understanding what he did when he came. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, Peter, you want to come take an offering this morning? Yeah. James, we'll have the worship team come take an offering this morning. Peter, you want to ask a blessing over that? Yeah, Peter, can pray. Sure. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to gather together. We thank you, Lord, that, Lord, everything belongs to you. Yes. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to sow into your kingdom, Lord. Yes, Lord. And in Jesus' name, bless this offering. May it increase and advance your kingdom across the earth, especially right here in Des Moines. And in all of yes. in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Who's ready for snow? Woohoo! That's because I gotta think of. The hawks on you. Hallelujah. Who smells great things? Snow white. Compost. That's compost. Compost. Leave it. Compost. Our trees. Our trees are the
just thank you for his goodness this morning. Praise God. Glory to God. You are a good, good God. Hallelujah. There's none like you, Lord. Praise God. Your goodness, your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a, a good hand clap. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. Thank you, Mike, and the worship team. Hallelujah. Thank you for those of you who testified and, and shared your prayer requests. Amen. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And the young people may be dismissed to go downstairs. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. I mentioned uh, Wednesday night, that Black Friday. Praise the Lord. I don't go out on Black Friday. Praise the Lord. In fact, I don't, I don't leave the house until the following Monday except for church. Praise the Lord. It's not safe out there. Because only in America do people trample others for sales exactly one day after being thankful for what they already have. It's insane, but we call it America. Praise God. Amen. So, praise the Lord. I'm glad all of you survived. Hope you all had a great Thanksgiving and uh, a safe Good Friday. Praise the Lord. Or Black Friday, I should say. Praise the Lord. Amen. Madness does take its toll. So please have correct change. That's true. Oh, praise God. Amen. Let's all lighten up. Hallelujah. You can relax now. Thanksgiving's over. You didn't burn the turkey. Amen. We all had something good to eat. Amen. And now we can relax and look forward to being stressed out over Christmas. Praise God. Amen. Not if we keep the focus on where the focus should be. Amen. Amen. Let's keep our eyes on Him, and everything else will kind of take care of itself. Praise God. Amen. Easy for me to say, my wife does all the shopping. <laughs> Praise God. But I'm trusting the Lord for her too. Praise God. <laughs> all right. If you have your Bibles, or if you don't, look up here on the screen, and I'll ask Sheila if she'll bring up 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. You know, this is, uh, where's Roberta? These holidays are, are like building a house or buying your first home. <clears throat> if you can survive that, your marriage can survive anything. Yes. Praise the Lord. Promise. Amen. So I'll just give you the keys to a good marriage while we're going to the scriptures. Do as you're told. <laughs> Praise God. And that just keep everything happy. Praise God. Amen. All right. Second Peter. Chapter 1, we're going to read verses 2 through 4. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be a partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world, through lust. Praise the Lord. And then let's let's read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So a, a life in Christ is a life that reflects God. Amen. It's, it's because of our new birth that we were placed in Christ. And there we became partakers of His divine nature. Amen. We were born from above. We have His nature. We have His DNA. We've talked about this many times. He didn't give us a law that we could keep. Amen. He gave us a life that would keep us. Yes. The life of God in us. Hallelujah. Amen. So in this new covenant, Jesus gave His life for us. Then He gave His life to us. Yes. Praise the Lord. And then He asked if 
if, if you'll take the privilege now of letting him live his life through us. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's not human effort. It's not a self-help thing. It's not a seven steps, ten steps, or anything else. Amen. It's something brand new. It's a new life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Old things have passed away. We have this new creature that is us. Amen. In Christ. All right. Romans chapter 5, verses 18 through chapter 6, verse 3. I don't know how difficult that is, if that's a problem transitioning from, well, we'll just have to stop at the end of 5 and then go to 6, however you want to do it. I don't care. Say it all again. Romans chapter 5, 18, through the end of the 5th verse, and then we're going to read 6, verses 1 through 3. So beginning at Romans chapter 5 and verse 18. Praise the Lord. Amen. The computer doesn't know how to just keep on going. It's just a problem. Praise the Lord. That's my understanding of it, which I know nothing about computers. So. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. So, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Six, one through what? One through three. I just do this to aggravate Sheila. I want to see if she's prayed up when she gets here. Praise the Lord. She's doing well back there. She's, she's doing good. And I haven't gotten any daggers. Okay, so what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Dead is the key here. That we're dead to sin. We're, we're, we are a new creation, right? So all things have passed away. That's, that's dead. And that old person that we were before we were born again is dead as far as God's concerned. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. And he died, amen, to remit our sins. Praise the Lord. So by simply choosing to follow Christ, you set a whole new cycle into motion. Amen. There's a whole new life cycle now taking place because of choosing Him. Amen. Romans chapter 7 now, verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He's talking about sin. Amen. So here's the question. As believers, are we doomed to repeat the same failures Again, over and over. Does history have to repeat itself? Okay, that's the question that confronts us all the time. Am I going to have to go through this again? Am I going to go, go through that again? Am I going to repeat that mistake? Am I going to do this bad thing? Am I going to forget? Am I going to make it? You know, all those kind of things. So then comes this powerful answer to the question of who shall deliver me from that. Amen. Thank God. He will. Yeah. Praise the Lord. There's something new. There's a brand new covenant. Praise the Lord. A brand new agreement. Praise the Lord. There's a new creature and a new man. There's a new nature. Hallelujah. His mercy is new every morning. Yeah. There's a new heaven. There's a new earth. There's a new spirit. Yeah. Praise the Lord. A new song. A new Jerusalem. A new wine. Amen. Not the uh, uh, amen. The, the the old wine or the new wine in old wineskins the old covenant not a new spirit in the old covenant praise the lord amen a new garment not a patched up old garment praise the lord a new name behold i make all things new hallelujah we are not destined to live a roller coaster ride of failure and frustration hallelujah we are called to a life of victory praise the lord hallelujah new creatures that know nothing but victory in christ if we'll keep the focus amen on him Praise God. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Ephesians 1 and 3. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Hallelujah. You are dead. We've already established that. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Praise the Lord. James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. James 1, 22 through 25. We're talking about all this to lead us to some place where we can understand why and how. Amen. So he's, James says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. You know, you've heard some word this morning already. Praise the Lord. Not a lot, but you've heard enough. Praise the Lord. But he says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man that beholds his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway, straightway forgets what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever walked up to a to a pond or a, a pool or a fountain or what have you, amen, and just looked into it, just looked down into that water? What happens is that when you look into the water, you see your reflection, right? But you don't just see your reflection, you see the sky above. Yes, you do. Amen. You see the heavens above you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you're seeing God is wanting to bring us to the water of His Word. That's what we're talking about here. The mirror of the Word of God. Amen. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12. He's wanting to bring us to the mirror of the Word. To where we see ourselves. But we don't just see ourselves. We see ourselves as heavenly beings. As born again reality. Amen. As new creatures. Praise God. Amen. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Now let me just say this. This mirror that we're looking into is no longer a glass darkly. Praise the Lord. We're not, talk we're not talking about what we're hoping to be. We're, ha we're talking about what we are if we understand the reflection that we're seeing. Yes. So that's, that's that. That's not now. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into that same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we're talking about a mirror that has an open face, amen, so you can see, steadfastly look into another image, and the image you see is the image of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're no longer seeing us. We're seeing a reflection of God in us. If we're looking through a glass open face instead of into it darkly with our understanding bothered. Amen. If the veil is over us because of the law and we're seeing ourselves based on all of our behavior and our actions instead of on the finished work of what Jesus Christ has done. That's what he's trying to get us to see. Amen. There's an image. Amen. That's reflected in the word of God and it's not an image of you being cursed or you being damned. It's an image of you being set free. Hallelujah. Given liberty. Amen. By the sacrifice of Jesus Christ whom now you live in and he lives in you and we are all in God by Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's telling us how to become a doer of the word. If we go back to James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. Amen. So this scripture, being a doer of the word, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. He beholds himself, goes his way, straightway forgets what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed yes. in his deed. Praise the Lord. So being a doer of the word, this, this scripture isn't pressuring us to perform. Hallelujah. It's telling us how to become a doer of the word. It tells us that if we're going to be a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, it's because we haven't looked into a mirror or in a glass and beheld our natural face. Praise the Lord. Our Genesis face is what that word actually translates for how we were created in the image of God. 
Praise the Lord. Genesis, let's go back to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This, this, holiday, this holiday season, this Christmas season, Christ's birth, Christ's mass, amen, ought to be the best that we've ever had and point us to something greater even in our future. If we really understand what that birth, that death, that resurrection has, has brought to us, amen, we'll no longer fear. We'll, we won't live, amen, under uh, stress and confusion and doubt and, and, and questioning what our future is going to be. Our future is in Christ. It has been established, praise the Lord. Lord, if we can see ourselves in that reality. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Hallelujah. Now listen carefully. When the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. Yes. So in other words, God began to lean over and put his reflection in the water. That's the spirit moves out over the water. Amen. When God put his reflection in the water, all of a sudden, everything starts changing. Praise God. Amen. All of a sudden, amen, we go from darkness to light. Praise the Lord. Then in Genesis 6, man, it says, began to multiply. Now listen carefully to the language here on the face of the earth. And daughters were born unto them. And they began to multiply, not on the face of the waters. Amen. They didn't begin to multiply the image of God, in other words. They began to multiply the face of the earth. They began to multiply the earth face. Praise the Lord. They began to reproduce giants. Hallelujah. Some of those giants, they're going to have to face later on. Like Goliath, for example. I'll, I'll get back to that in a little while. But let's, let's go to Genesis chapter 6 and we'll read verses 1 through 7. Just to show you what I'm talking about. Genesis 6, 1 through 7. Came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Praise the Lord. Amen. So God's going to destroy them from their earth face. Praise the Lord. This isn't a stretch. This is what the language is actually trying to tell us. Amen. If we would just look at it through the eyes of the Spirit, praise God. Genesis chapter 6 and 8. Then God does what He always does. The Lord said, I, okay, verse 8. Noah. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. In the reflection of God. Praise the Lord. So we should look to the eyes of God and behold His grace. We should see, amen, our, the reflection of God in this Word as a, as a gift of grace. Yes, there's evil in the world. Praise the Lord. Fallen man. Amen. The unsaved are still here. All you got to do is pick up the newspaper. Amen. Look down the street and see the latest thing that's going on in your neighborhood because it's happening in all of them. Praise the Lord. Some is just being more affected than others. But I'm telling you, the evil of man is still in the world. Praise the Lord. But we don't have to be subject to it, amen, because of who we are in Christ. So we need to look in the eyes of God and behold the grace of God. Let's go back to 2 Peter now, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord, Simon Peter, his servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. So the grace we see isn't 
the fallen man of earth, but we see our reflection in the glory of the face of Jesus Christ. And that will change us, the scripture says, into that same image, into his same image. Praise the Lord. Now, we're talking about in those days when God seen all this evil and, and Noah found grace, but the evil was still there all around him. And so what does God do? He tells Noah, build an ark. Amen. An uh, ark is a picture of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Yes, Praise the Lord. Amen. We are washed, the scripture says, by the word of God. So there's a, there's a metaphor here of the word being like water. Yes. Hallelujah. It is not only the word, it is God in the flesh. The Word became flesh, amen, and dwelt among us. Praise the Lord. So when God began to release the fountains of the deep in that day, amen, the water began to rise up, amen, come up onto the face of the earth, amen. All of a sudden, God placed them in an ark, and they were lifted up above the face of the earth by the water. Yes. Praise God. Ooh, I don't know if anybody else is with me here this morning. But I'm saying the Spirit of God lifts us up above the corruption. But He told us we have been delivered from the corruption of this world, in this world. That doesn't mean we just, you know, we, 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 uh, we don't do it. What it means is we're, we're, we escape from it. We're not affected by it the way the world is. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They can be doing their thing. Amen. We can be right there. Only because of the Spirit of God, we're not affected about it. We are lifted up above. We are seated with Him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. But you've got to see yourself in the Word. You've got to know this. This has to be your reality. And the only way it can be is by looking into the Word of God and receiving that. Amen. And believing that's your reality. That's your truth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So God puts them in the ark. He lifts them up above the face of the earth. Romans, or excuse me, Genesis chapter 7. Verses 16 through 18. Genesis 7, 16 through 18. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to take you higher. Hallelujah. Everybody know that old song? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not talking about a head high here. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I'm talking about something that will elevate you, amen, to a place where you are who you really are. So you, your perception will become your reality. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Genesis 7, verse 16 through 18. And they that went in, went in male and female. We're talking about God brought them all into the ark. Amen. And so as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth, and the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the scripture says, if we really believe God, that we'll see the day when the glory of God will fill the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. Praise the Lord. Amen. When the waters just prevail, when the Spirit of God prevails over every other living thing, every other thing that's in this creation. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Amen. The waters prevail and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the water. And when God turns up the water, it lifts us up above the earth. When he poured out the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, all these people are being born again. They're, they're born into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of heaven, praise God. And we are washed by the, amen, Hebrews 10 and, and, and 12 says we are washed by the water of his spirit. Yes, praise God. Amen. The, amen. The, the water removes our earth face. The spirit of God comes to dwell within us and it removes our earth face and gives us a heavenly face. Amen. A face of Jesus Christ. We are all heirs and joint heirs. We have God's DNA. We're not what we used to be. Hallelujah. We may be here, but we're up above it. Amen. As far as God's concerned. Praise God. Amen. The ark, the scripture says it was pitched within and it was pitched without. That word pitched is kopher. K-O-P-H-E-R. That's a Hebrew word. Amen. And it means atonement. Hallelujah. It means ransom or satisfaction, redemptive price. It was redeemed in and out, inside and outside. Praise the Lord. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We have been pitched, hallelujah, inside and out by the Spirit of God Almighty. Hallelujah. By His presence. Oh, church, I'm telling you, if you can believe this, you can believe for anything. You can believe for that person, amen, that's struggling with all of their issues and all of their health 
and, and spiritual and physical and financial. Amen. Because we're lifted up above us. We have an influence. The Spirit of God has an influence in this earth. It, this earth is dealing with an earth face. We're dealing with a God face, with a heavenly face. Amen. With the Spirit of God. And that always dominates. Amen. Amen. He came and looked and saw his reflection in the earth and light came. Yes. Where there was darkness. Yes. Where there was fear and confusion. And scripture says chaos. Yes. And light came. And revelation came. Mm -hmm. A revelation of God himself. Every living substance was destroyed. Which was on the face of the earth. Yes. Praise the Lord. Alright, look at Genesis 7 verses 23 and 24. Genesis 7, 23 and 24. Praise God. Every living substance was destroyed, which was on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping things, the fowl of the heaven. They were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in Christ, we could say. And the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. The water was the place where God removes our earth face. The spirit. Yes. Amen. Noah's name means rest. He didn't do anything. He just got in the boat and God did all the rest. Yeah. We just rest in Christ. That, that ark is a type of Christ, the redemptive work of God. We rest in the finished work of Jesus. Can you hear what I'm saying to you? Praise the Lord. Amen. We cease from our labor. We no longer see ourselves as earthly. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. Right. Hallelujah. We are seated with Him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're not natural by this world. Hallelujah. But we see ourselves, we see our Genesis face, our true identity, the express image of God. Amen. And we see His glory looking into the face of his waters. Yeah. Now remember I mentioned earlier Goliath, these things that came as a result of the earth face of what the world is like, what the world does. Amen. Now they were real people, real creatures, real creations or not creations, but real realities. But they're metaphors, they're, they're types, amen, for the for the uh, demonic influence that's in the earth. How it influences people's lives. We talk about the shootings and the killings and the crazy stuff that goes on, amen, in our communities. And, and I mean, I, I listen to the news and I think, how, how, can, how can somebody do this? They, 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 they just recently, these, this couple, and the, they left their baby, I mean, an infant in a, in a little, you know, swing thing, and it starved to death and died in its own filth. And they were there getting high around it all the time. I'm telling you, there's giants in the land. There's, there's demonic influence that's influencing human beings yes. and causing them to do things that they would never do if they were operating from their, the reflection of their heavenly face, of their spiritual reality. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. They multiplied. These giants, it says, they multiplied on the face of the earth. In other words, they multiplied the earth face. That reality. Are you still yes. with me? Praise the Lord. Look, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 21, verses 8 through 10. 1 Samuel 21, 8 through 10. Now this is David's running from Saul. Saul's trying to kill him because, you know, he knows that God has declared him to be the king. And the people are wanting him to be king. And so Saul wants to kill him. Saul wants to take away his God-given identity. Are you with me? God said you're going to be king. I have anointed you king when he was just a boy. He's, God already seen him as a king. Yeah. Some of us have got anointings we've had since birth. God put it in you. You may not even understand it. And the enemy's after you because he wants to steal. He wants to kill that anointing. He wants to stop you, amen, for being everything that God has declared that you are. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, David said unto Abimelech, and is there not, he's, he's gone to the priest of Nob, and that's where he's at. He's at, this, he's at the, the uh, tabernacle. And he said unto Elam, is there not here under thy hand spear or sword? 
Because I've neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me because the king's business required haste. Now he's lying to him because he doesn't want them to know that the king's trying to kill him. He says, I'm here on the king's business. And the priest said, the sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it's here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, there is none like that. Give it to me. So it's the sword that David took from Goliath when he cut his head off after he killed him. He took it to the tabernacle and they put it there. And that, it had been there ever since then. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the, the king of Gath. Now we'll go into all that because it's not relevant to what I'm talking about this morning. But when David, who is a type of Christ and also a natural ancestor of the man, Jesus, amen, when he came to the priest at Nob, he asked the priest, have you any weapons here? And they replied, only the sword of Goliath that's hidden behind the ephod. Anybody, y'all have seen a sword, right? What does it look like? If it's a true sword, it looks like a cross. You got this, the half, and then you've got right so I'm just putting that out there so he tells us about the sword of the spirit amen and so I imagine what that sword meant to David is he had, he had brought it there years before this right after he, his victory over Goliath and they hid it there in the tabernacle right and it reminded him of a past victory of this great victory when Israel saying, Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. It was the day that he was perceived as a conquering king. So when David wrapped his hand around that sword, it was a comfort to him. It reminded him of the promise of God that one day he would be king. It reminded him of his God image, of what God had declared him to be. That's what the cross does. It tells us we're not what we were. We are a new creation. We are what God has ordained us to be. Amen. But we have to see it. Sometimes we got to get our, wrap our arms around it, get our head around it, get our, get it in our hands somehow. Praise the Lord. Amen. Second Peter chapter one and verse four. He was sensing his God image is what I'm saying. When he grabbed that sword. It brought to him the image that God had of him, who he was. Yes. Amen. So to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, or reserved in the kingdom, an inheritance incorruptible, uh -huh. undefiled, that fades not away, that, that does never go away. The callings and elections of God are without repentance. Whatever he called you to be, whatever he called you to do, when you were in before the foundation of the world when you were in Christ. That's never changed, regardless of what you've done to try to undermine it. Yes. And we all have, but you can't undermine it. Look at David's life for crying out loud. Yes. Exactly. From a human perspective, he was a total failure as a husband, as a father, you know, even as a king in many ways. Sure. And yet God said he's a man after my own heart. Right. Yes. Praise the Lord. Right now, David's running from a, the present king. Trying, that's trying to kill him. So David is going to be reduced to living in a cave. A cave that looked a lot like the tomb. Amen. And out of that cave would come a great king. Praise the Lord. Out of your death in Christ comes kings and priests. Praise the Lord. You were crucified with Christ. You died. And your life is now hid in Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. This is a powerful picture of Jesus, the greater son of David. Amen. Who we are in Christ. The Philistines, they begin to shout, give us a man to fight our champion. And if your guy wins, we'll serve you. But if our guy wins, you got to serve us. How many of you know our guy won? Amen. Praise the Lord. Our guy won. Amen. Now, remember, Goliath was his name. Goliath was the champion of the earth face, sure. if you will. He had six fingers and six toes, the scripture says. So not only was he weird looking, 
Six is the number of fallen man. Praise the Lord. Our Goliath represents fallen man under the control of the devil. The, the, the God of this world. Jesus even referred to him as. Praise the Lord. And our heavenly David, through the work of the cross, has defeated every enemy. He defeated the devil. Hallelujah. And crucified who we were in Adam. Praise the Lord. Jesus was crucified on Golgotha, place of the skull. Golgotha, and I've read a lot of Jewish uh, traditions and so forth. I've got books, Eidersham and Leith, and you know, multiple books. And they all say, these old rabbis, they say that the legend is Goliath's head was buried where the cross would be erected. Golgotha. Amen. Our heavenly David has defeated. Amen. Goliath. Now, Goliath is derived from the name, or, or excuse me, Golgotha is derived from the name Goliath of Gath. Yes. That's where it comes from. Praise the Lord. And David defeated every enemy. Amen. Our heavenly David. Yes. Through the death, burial, and resurrection on Golgotha. Hallelujah. Right on the head. Amen. Of our enemy. Praise the Lord. Amen. David didn't get that sword to kill Saul. He had opportunities to kill Saul, but he refused to do it. He cut off the, the tail end of his garment. When he caught him in the cave, he came in the same cave, and he went in there to relieve himself, and David went up and cut off the bottom of his garment. He could have slit his throat. He could have stabbed him. He could have killed him. He could have finished him off right then, but he, he refused to do it. He said, God's going to put me where I'm supposed to be. It'll be God that does it, not me. Praise the Lord. So the sword was like the cross. It was a reminder of past victories. And David's God-given identity as a king and a priest. He knew he didn't have to fight this battle. The battle had already been won because of God's promise. And through these precious promises, we become partakers of the divine nature of God. We become who God declared us to be, His image in this earth. Praise the Lord. Yes. So it was only a matter of time that David would come out of that cave, that death cave, amen, and be exalted to the throne. Amen. amen. Jesus is reigning right now in heavenly places. Yes. That'd be us, church. Yes. Yes. We're, we're thinking it's off somewhere out here in space. Someplace. No, He's reigning in heavenly places. That's, that's us. We are the new creation. We are the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is in us. Yes, yes. These heavenly places exist where we are. Yes. Praise the Lord. So David's going to come out of that cave and exalted to the throne. Jesus is reigning right now in heavenly places. And as he is, so are we in this world. Yes, we are. Yeah. As he reigns, hallelujah, we are reigning in this world. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are, amen, God's reflection yes. in the earth. His kings and his priests. Yes. One more scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21. Praise the Lord. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we have no more. Why? Because he's spirit. They're not looking at him as a man any more than we are to look at each other as men and women or human beings. We're supposed to see Christ and him crucified. Christ only. We are Christ in this earth. We are kings and priests. The whole idea of prejudice of any kind is so idiotic and so contrary to the word of God. Yes. We are, we all are, we, we are God's reflection in this earth. Every single one of us. And to see anybody, I don't care what, I, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying anything about, I'm not talking about color here. I'm talking about our pre prejudices. Yes. We, we are God's reflection. When I see you, I got to see Jesus. I got to see God. Anything else, I'm, a, I'm lying to myself. Because if I can't see you for who you are, there's no way I can claim to see me for who I am. I'm a liar if I do. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Now God is in us, reconciling, trying to reconcile the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we would be made the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So our Father, our Father doesn't live on some planet like you're south of Mars. Amen. He lives inside of us. Praise God. When you see his reflection in you, you will return to the place to the kingdom yes. that God has ordained you to rule and reign in. You'll come out of your cave of death. You'll come out of that old man and you'll rule and reign, amen, in the kingdom of God, the kingdom that God has ordained you to rule and reign in. We will reign in this world, in this life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. You've been called to rule and to reign as a king and priest. Man. Behold your face. A reflection of God himself. If nothing's impossible with God, then bless God, nothing shall be impossible to you. Just, you need to just behold the face, the reflection of God, and see who you are, and you shall do works, and greater works than those will you do, because he went to the Father, we are now with the Father, and the Father is with us, and nothing is impossible to them that believe. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're celebrating Christ's Mass. But you know what? When we celebrate Christmas, we're celebrating our birth, our true birth, our birth in Christ. Who we really, I don't know what day your birthday is, but I'm telling you what, we ought to be celebrating Christmas as though it were each and every one of our birthdays. That's why we're giving gifts, amen, because our Heavenly Father, amen, every good and perfect gift comes down from heaven, amen, from our Father of lights with whom there's no variableness nor shadow of turning. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever He de de declared us to be, that's what we are, and that's what we will be for eternity. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. We're not stressing out over what gift to give. We have received the greatest gift. Anything after that is just being redundant and, and it's just, uh, you know, mediocre and, 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 and simply, uh, you know, uh, well, I get my mind, you know, it's not because I'm old, it's because I got too many things going through my head right now. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm just, praise God, talking faster than I can think. Amen. But anything we give, it's just a thing. Sure it is. What we want to give yeah. is Jesus. Yeah. And if it, if it means giving a gift to get their attention, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But let's not forget, this isn't about the gifts. No, it it's about the gift. Yes. Let's not let them forget that all this other stuff is fine and we, we enjoy it and it's good. But all it is is a metaphor for the great gift, Amen. for the one perfect gift. Amen. That has made everything else possible. Amen. Let's celebrate that. Let's celebrate it not just on the 25th. But let's celebrate it every day. And we will see the kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. And on the earth face just as it is in this heavenly face. Praise the Lord. They need it. We needed it. And they need it now. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord one more hand this morning. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. Amen. Go in the power of his might. That's who you are. In Jesus' name, you're dismissed. Praise God.